Hello, folks. I got a good one for you here tonight. All right. So here's the plan. I am going to see if providing liquidity is a good plan. So here at the Paul Sachs website, yay, we can go to trade and liquidity. And that opens up here. I selected some tokens. Uh, we're going to add up a pair between Paul Sachs and Pulse. So we're going to enable Pulse Sachs. And titles turning on a contract. We'll confirm that. Now that this is activated, come on, come on, come on. Should update these numbers. All right, now we have an option of supply. Now go big or go home. We're going to up this to 10000 approximately $15 worth. All right, and we have to match that with the same price value, 4,423 of Pulse. And we'll hit supply. All right. And we see Pulse X Pulse tokens. So these will represent the liquidity I have provided for our supply. All right. Go in here, confirm. Excellent. All right. Add LP to MetaMask. Let's do that. Add token. All right. Okay, so we'll close that. Excellent. Now we surprise supplied. So let's have a look at MetaMask. All right. And we can see the transaction. Cool. And the liquidity. Activity, assets. All right, so that's what we have left. Now let's go have a look at the math. Not the Pulse X math, this math. All right, so 5577. Bam. That looks like exactly what we did there. All right, so this now matches. Here's what I have 100,000 and 10,000. So here's the relative value. All right, put in, yep, relatively $15 <clears throat> Pulse X. Then we had to match the same value worth. Uh, so then I must have these backwards. Uh, let's change that to a star. There we go. Now that's the right direction. All right. So for my next trick, we're going to build the liquidity pool that we just built because you have to provide liquidity at both ends. So basically this is attached to the other one. It's part of it. So as the price changes, this one will change. Four, four, two, three. All right. So what we then want to know is what's our K value, which will equal this one times this one. Bam. Cool. And this is when... So now this is a relative ratio between these two of 2.25, basically. So let's go ahead and look at it another way. This will equal this one divided by this one. Okay, there's our price. So now what we want to do for our next trick is as we shift price, we want to be able to have these go up and down. So we got to break this down quickly. So we find out our square root of K so that we can find our one-to-one -one ratio price. So what's our one-to-one -one ratio for the pool we just created? All right, so this will equal square root. Square root of the K value. Bam. All right, so really, control X. I'm going to cut that there, put that there. And we'll just say this one equals that one. So again... This means that if we multiply this side, okay, this side, get the same K value. Excellent. So this is our K value that will not shift in our liquidity pool. Now what we want to look at here is what if the ratio becomes more skewed between the two assets? All right. So what we're going to do now that we know this is create a shift. So we will say that uh, make this our pulse X side. All right. So for the 
liquidity pool. Once I get to the one to one ratio, like how do I go ahead and fix that again? <clears throat> All right. I messed up a step here. So this here has to actually equal square root function. That one. There we go. Now that does that shift. So this right here tells us the value basically that we put in. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to make this one equal this one here fun times. We're going to make this one here equal this one. So nothing seems to have changed. But now we can see the relative value that we put in providing liquidity. And let's have a look at impermanent loss. So um, what we're going to assume is that the price of See, this is hard because they're priced against each other instead of just dollars. Um, I should have made a USDC pair, but oh well. Uh, basically, what we're looking at here is if the ratio goes out of whack. So if this pool changes, what happens? So what we're going to do is change this ratio. And I want to show what happens if it really skews out of whack. So we're not going to play around slow here. We're just going to go right at it and make this a 100 ratio. All right, well, now we've had some major shift. Now, in this, all right, because we have the one asset priced, yeah, Pulse X ends up becoming more abundant in here. Oops, this isn't actually the way I want this to go, so this is cute perfect. We're going to change this to 0 0.0001. All right, that's the way we want this to go. Now, this is where this is interesting. So if this Pulse X is becoming more expensive like this, we would have to assume that the price did something like this for that kind of shift. All right, let's even assume, yeah, for that, we went from one to divide by a thousand. We would have to make Pulse X's price to jump to that. So in this, we're trying to establish, did we lose money or did we gain money? Like, how does this work? So let's have a look here. If we take what we would have had here, and this is in permanent loss. This is what our tokens would have been worth if we hadn't provided liquidity during this. And then we subtract what we currently have. All right. Well, I must have done something wrong here because it seems to indicate that this skew in price, we would still be at a benefit here. Um, how am I doing this one? Oh, that's why this is all skewing because I'm doing math like that. Hinky jinky. Zero, 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 seven, nine. That was where that was sitting. All right, so if we assume that didn't shift. So what we're looking at now here, this one minus this one gives us this. So what's the actual difference here? That minus this. Oh yeah, same as that. I'm doing the math all backwards, but so this is what we actually have. That's what we would have started with. And this is the difference between the two. That's what we call impermanent loss. All right, so providing liquidity, if there's impermanent loss, why is this a good idea? Incentive tokens. So in here we have the party token and the LP token. And whether it's valuable to provide liquidity depends on two things. When you're earning fees and everything. All right. <clears throat> A little bit of technical difficulties recording here. So basically, um, with the basically with the price here. So what I was trying to sum up is the permanent loss that we end up with. Does it end up worth uh, sitting up worth it? So we look at the value change. I was talking about and we have impermanent loss I skewed that out just a little yeah I am still messing up so 
basically shifting around here it's hard to keep track so I made pulse X one dollar here and then pulse should be I made that the wrong direction still all right the idea is impermanent loss we always take some when providing liquidity so this big jumble of numbers just shows okay there's permanent loss this is why we get paid in yeah this is why we get paid in incentive token LP token well wow. see fees so the real question is when you're getting paid the token and the fees minus that one okay so this one will be equal to the impermanent loss hello so now basically our fees and our incentive tokens need to outweigh the value so ideally we make maybe this much all right and then we even make some in the fees oh my god this is not working out great for me making videos tonight folks all right, so with all these numbers looking at word positive, the idea is that the fees and the incentive tokens need to be worth more than the permanent loss you'll take in a trading pool. Now, the idea here is, so I want to do E hex and P hex because I believe they'll trade at parity. This means the impermanent loss, like this ratio, will always kind of stay around one and the impermanent loss is going to be negligible because no well, they should trade pretty similarly but occasionally they'll spike one direction or the other make fees make incentive token it's a safe liquidity to provide that's why i like the ehex px pair but then there's other pairs like say usdc and hex and that's more representative to this scale where hex will always be worth more and more so there'd be less hex in the pool so if this were, say, hex and USDC instead of pulse and pulse X, it might make more sense. And the idea is if the price were to jump by a thousand X, well, you'd have a bunch more, uh, a bunch more USDC, but way less coins, a thousand times less coins. And each coin equals that USDC. So you'd have a thousand times value roughly and that's where impermanent loss can really be nasty. This is two assets I looked at trading each other, but an asset worth, say, versus a stable coin is a whole different business. So be prepared to do your math when looking to see if you want to provide liquidity. And if you're going to earn that incentive token and you can't do this math, don't, uh, don't gamble with anything more than you can afford to lose. That's my opinion on liquidity providing. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy the fo functions on Paul Sex. Please hit like and subscribe and bless the comments and bless the algorithm. Good night.